Good morning. It's time to get up with Title Time Trash Talk. With the legends ready to go, the bulletin board material finally flies. Wait till you hear who said it. Then, hold everything. This eagle may still be ready to fly out of Philly. Shefty thinks it'll happen. We've got the very latest. And then, the one person who would know tells us exactly how it's going to end for Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Spoiler alert, not well. All that and more as we get up with you starting right now. Counting down the days to the Super Bowl. Greedy from our studios in the seaport of New York City. Delighted to be here and delighted to welcome this crew that is ready to go. Dominique Foxworth is, is delightfully dressed today for the occasion. Graziano's got the insight. And Booger and Lewis are down in Tampa. And I'm curious to hear their reaction to our top story because, candidly, it would not have been a problem for them as we work our way towards the kickoff of Super Bowl 55 on Sunday here. We're now three days away and counting in our developing story from Dan Graziano. Dan, what is the latest on the Chiefs' COVID situation and just how close a shave was it for Demarcus Robinson and Dan Kilgore? You know, Greeny, honestly, this is a story about the, the league's protocols working. There was a late November change to the COVID protocols that allows teams to bring in up to five people per, per week that fit into one of three categories a medical specialist like a chiropractor, a massage therapist, or a barber. These people have to be tested before they're allowed into the facility, and they're tested every day that they're there along uh, just like the players and other personnel. They have to wear a face shield and an N95 mask while performing their services, and the player who's getting the haircut has to as well. So what happened is, as you see here, the, the Chiefs were getting their hair cut the other day, and the barber's test came back positive, so they had to stop in the middle of Daniel Kilgore's haircut and get him and Demarcus Robinson and the barber out of the facility because Kilgore and Demarcus Robinson were identified as high-risk close contacts. Now, Kilgore's having some fun there. That's not presumably what his hair actually looks like at the moment, but uh, the report that he was stopped mid-haircut resulted in that tweet from him. So he, he, those two are high-risk close contacts. They have to stay away for five days, which in this case means they should be back in time for the game as long as they continue to test negative. And all the other people that were waiting to get their hair cut, including Patrick Mahomes, never got in contact with the barber, so they didn't have to be uh, removed and isolated. They could continue to practice and be around the facility. Well, if there's one thing we have known, uh, if anyone who's been watching any football knows that in order to get the Patrick Price, you have to get his haircut. So that could be a problem for them. But I did want to bring the crew in here on this one, and particularly to get the insight uh, from Lewis Riddick and Booger McFarland as to how significant of a problem you feel this might have been for yourselves had you been in this situation. Guys, I feel you might have a unique, Booger, a unique perspective, do you think, on, on the danger of getting a haircut so close to the Super Bowl. Booger, what is your reaction? Well, Greeny, first of all, back then back I did then? have hair. And getting a haircut right before the Super Bowl <laughs> was something everybody wanted to do. You got to look fresh, Greeny. Like, everybody <laughs> wants to look fresh. Nowadays, I don't have to worry about that because I can cut my own hair in about four or five minutes. But, Greeny, haircut is one of the most <laughs> essential things you can have for an NFL player. Lewis, I was looking for something funny. Oh, there's no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Booger didn't give you nothing. I get it, man. I get it. Look, I played in the days with Deion Sanders, so you know what you know what Deion always says. He says you look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good, and when you play good, you get good. paid good. So I, I look, I get it. I, I get it. I get that they wanted to look. I was just wondering why they were getting a whole a haircut like a whole week ahead of time. Yeah. I do want to get it the night Tampa. before. You guys are get in Tampa covering the Super Bowl. You just got to go find Tom Brady and get on that TB12. I hear it does wonders for the hairline. It has that thing going forward and forward. <laughs> you just got to get on that avocado ice cream. Hey man, I'm not even. I'm not even tripping. I'm not even worried about it anymore though. I'm like Boog. I'm good. I'm good. I'll have to yeah, worry I about get, nobody hey, wearing I, no mask, I, no face shield. I'm good. Okay, fair enough. Let's leave it there Gave for the up moment. a long time ago, Nick. Let's get to the football <laughs> piece of this if we can. I'm going to ask each of you for one thing you're watching for on Sunday. Lewis Riddick, what do you have your eye on? I'm watching the defensive backs of the Kansas City Chiefs and their ability to get up on the line and play press coverage. Look, these, these guys absolutely took Buffalo out of their game plan last week as far as their ability to really put pressure on, pressure on them at the line of scrimmage and then get pressure on the quarterback. That's going to be imperative in this game. Remember the name Legereus Need, their rookie this year, their rookie corner who plays both inside and outside. He's a sneaky good player. Neek, what are you looking for? Travis Kelsey, I think that the Bucks learned their lesson about Tyreek Hill. They're going to double him this time, and Travis Kelsey is going to go going up against some safeties that are just coming off of injury. So I think Kelsey is going to be a big part of this game plan early. 
Right, set the record for most yards receiving ever this season by a tight end. Booger, what are you watching for? Well, Green, it's got to be the matchup with this Buccaneer defensive line against this Chiefs offensive line. We can talk about Patrick Mahomes being all world, the greatest player ever, et cetera, et cetera, but I've never seen anyone throw their back. So if the Buccaneer defensive line is able to get to Patrick Mahomes, I don't care how good he is, they will affect him during this game. Well, look, and no one knows better than you do, Booger McFarlane. Let's stop down there for a minute that in Tampa Bay, you win Super Bowls with great defenses. The last time they won this game, you were a part of that defense, and it's one of the great defenses of all time. So, Dominique Foxworth, am I oversimplifying it if I were to say that the, this game comes down to can the Buccaneers' pass rush wreck the game? They did it to some degree against Aaron Rodgers. Now the Chiefs are without their starting left tackle. If they wreck the game, they have an excellent chance to win. If they don't, then they can't beat Patrick Mahomes. Is that oversimplifying it? No, I think football is a pretty simple game. Sometimes it, we make it complex when we go through all the X's and O's and all the different externalities that could affect the game. But if you can't block guys, you can't win. If those defensive <laughs> linemen are sitting in Patrick Mahomes' lap, we've seen him throw on all types of arm, arm angles, and we've seen him shed off defenders and, and throw while spinning. But if they keep doing it time after time, nobody is that good. And we saw it happen to Aaron Rodgers, one of the best we've ever seen last, or a couple weeks ago. Aaron Rodgers was playing well when he wasn't getting assaulted by Shaq Barrett or Vita Vea or, uh, or JPP or Sue. Like, those guys played well last week. That was the reason reason why they won and they might be the reason why the Bucks have a chance to win this week. So let's let's we're all defensive or you guys are all defensive players here Lewis. Let's give the fans it's something great. to look for. If those guys start wrecking the game, do you believe it causes things for the fans to watch? Will Kansas City have to change up what they're doing? Do they have to keep extra people in? Will they not be able to do the full complement of what they want to do in their passing game because they have to commit extra people to to keeping Patrick Mahomes protected? Lewis, is that your expectation? Well, it could be, yeah. I think it's a, it's a two-fold issue, though, and, and Neek knows this, and so does Booger. Not only does the pass rush need to win and Kansas City need to block him up, but see, what needs to happen for Tampa Bay is in the back end, at the second and third level of the defense, those guys have to disrupt the timing of guys like Tyreek and Travis because if they're able to get off the ball quickly and still win their one-on-ones in those first five yards, then Patrick's just going to get that ball out between you know before 2.5 seconds. It's not going to matter if they're winning. That's how it all goes together. Remember, Remember how New England used to beat Kansas City when they were beating them? It was because the front and the coverage were going together. Not only were they winning up front, but the defensive backs were beating up his wide receivers and Patrick had to hold the football. That's the key. So as long as this young secondary of Tampa Bay holds up their end of the bargain, then I think you really do have a problem for Kansas City. But if they don't, then they won't have to keep extra people in because Patrick will just get through his progressions quick and he'll get them in the catch and run situations, which they're the very best in the NFL at doing. You get Tyreek the ball on a rocket screen, tunnel screen, a quick slant, he'll take it 90 on you in a hurry. So it's really going to be about the secondary helping out the front as well. Bear in mind, when these teams played each other uh, earlier in the season, Tyreek Hill had 200 yards receiving in the first quarter. So, Booger, design the defense for me. Give, if you're the defensive coordinator for Tampa Bay this weekend, you're Todd Bowles. Give me the defensive strategy. Well, Green, I, I think what you hear Dominique and Lewis saying is, is pass defense is a combination of rush and coverage. With that being said, I think Andy Reid also knows that Mike Rimmers and Andrew Wiley aren't his normal starting tackles. So, yes, they're going to design a game plan to protect those guys. If you're asking me what I would do, I think the key chess piece in this game is not Tyreek Hill. It's Travis Kelsey because Travis Kelsey controls the middle of the field. So I'm going to take a page of what I've seen work. Success leaves clues all the time in life. Let's go back to when Patrick Mahomes and this chief offense struggled against the defense. What did Bill Belichick do? He kept a safety over the top of Tyreek Hill and he bracketed and hit Travis Kelsey. For the life of me, Greeny, I do not understand why teams allow Travis Kelsey to get a free release out into the pass pattern. Bang this man. Make it difficult for him. Do not allow maybe the best route running tight end we've seen in a long time to have free release out on his pass pattern. So if I'm Bowles, I'm bracketing Travis Kelsey and if I can take one thing away, I'm taking away Travis Kelsey because I can keep the safety over the top of Tyreek Hill. I need 30 more seconds on that because, Dominique, Rob Ninkovich said the exact same thing yesterday on the show. said anyone who doesn't hit one of those two guys when they come off the line of scrimmage isn't doing their job. But no one ever seems to disrupt them. Why is that? 
because it requires you to take someone out from doing something else. Like, that makes you weaker against the run. That makes it harder to cover the slot receiver. Like, I understand the point, but the I guess the strategy there is make them beat you left-handed. But the problem is the, the um, Chiefs, they never really look left-handed. Like, if you take away uh, Kelsey, it's not like McCole Hartman can't go 75 on you also. He did it in the championship game. Right. It's not like a healthy Sammy Watkins won't be a problem to. And it's not as if Clyde Edwards-Alaire is a bum. Like, that's the tough thing. You start bracketing and doubling two and three guys, you're going to run out of guys. And Patrick <laughs> Mahomes is going to find the open dude. So maybe that's the answer, is if the Bucs can, Buccaneers can petition to play with 14 guys on defense, they'll have a better chance. <laughs>